the easiest types of books to write. What are they and how do you write one? Yeah, hey everybody, this is Ian from mindfulmarketplace.com and today's really quick uh, clip, we're gonna look at what we think are the absolute easiest books to write for folks in the uh, therapeutic, alternative wellness, personal growth, spiritual uh, development, anyone who has an inspiring, empowering message they wanna share with the world and is looking for the absolute easiest way of getting that out to the masses. So essentially what we recommend our clients and community is to write a bridge book and we define a bridge book as a book that introduces an idea that invites or inspires an experience and the core concept here is that we believe that you don't really transform your readers or our audience by dint of the books that we write, but actually through our work in the world. So you want to lead your readers, a small percentage of of them anyway, to actually immerse themselves in this end experience that you create before you've actually written the book. So you understand exactly what you're offering as this end experience. And then you uh, lead your reader through this process of, you know, educating them, inspiring them, intriguing them, Uh, You know, some people would call this a hook book where you're actually, you know, creating this unique approach to solving a uh, pernicious problem or a, uh, you know, a perpetual problem they may have in their lives. And then you're offering this kind of unique paradigm or unique uh, solution to a very uh, common problem. So I want to give you a really quick um, uh, example of what may be a bridge book, right? So because, you know, people sometimes struggle with taking this idea and applying it in the world. So a lot of the folks in our in our community, like I said, are interested in mindfulness and meditation and all these sort of uh, sorts of spiritually transformative experiences. Well, you can't really have a spiritually transformative experience, in my view anyway, from reading a book alone, right? You actually need to immerse yourself in an actual experience uh, after reading the book, whether that's going to a church or involving yourself in some ritual or practice or doing something that actually gives you this you know, transformation, this rock star result. It doesn't usually come from actually reading the words on a page. And a good example of this, lots of the people in our uh, community are interested in these like plant medicine experiences, uh, like going to, you know, some sort of shamanic ritual in Peru or Costa Rica and, you know, taking some sort of psychedelic and having this like life changing uh, experience. Now, I don't necessarily recommend or not recommend that, but just as a point of example, example, uh, you know, you can't have that experience. You can't have an an, an experience with a shaman shaman in Peru by dint of of the words on a page, right? You actually need to have the actual experience. The same thing is true about meditation, right? There are certain meditation practices, again, not necessarily recommending or not recommending this particular practice, but TM, transcendental meditation, for an example, you cannot learn that from a book, right? I mean, it is they are explicitly prohibited from, you know, if you're teaching TM, you can't share the method in a book. There is a personalization to their practice that must be learned through an immersive experience with one of their, in quotes, experts, one of their certified trainers, teachers. There are other uh, meditation practices, something like Vipassana Uh, meditation as taught in one of these 10 day uh, retreat sort of settings, you can't actually have the experience through the book, you actually have to be inspired by the book to go out and seek out the experience, right? You can't have a 10 day meditation guided training in the most popular uh, format, which is called Gwenka uh, Vipassana. You can't actually have that experience unless you go to a Gwenka meditation retreat for 10 days, turn in your phone, <laughs> turn off all your devices, you know, and follow their practice for 10 days. So, you know, all of this is what we have sort of codified into our own um, you know, process. You write a book that introduces an idea that invites or inspires an experience, preferably both, because there is a difference between 
inviting an experience and inspiring an experience. You want to inspire people to want to explore an experience that you actually offer. Because if you in- inspire them to be interested in having an experience that you don't offer, they're going to find that experience elsewhere, right? And if you want to build your brand by writing a nonfiction book and you're a professional entrepreneur or healer, teacher, you know, therapist, coach, yogi, whatever it may be, obviously you have some interest hopefully in you know getting your own words wisdom message and even you know marketing out into the world all right so again write a book that introduces an idea that invites or inspires an experience this is ian from mindfulmarketplace.com and if you have any questions about this process feel free to send us an email uh hi at mindfulmarketplace.com and i'm happy Uh, either myself or one of my uh, peers to get on the phone with you and help work you through this process and see if maybe we can work together to bring your book to life. Thanks so much for listening. And I look forward to sharing another short tip in the next couple of days. Thanks again.